Okay, so uh, as requested, we're going to do a little uh, lesson on uh, naming compounds and predicting the formula for compounds. So very similar to what we did up on the chalkboard today. Um, maybe just kind of, maybe I should just recreate that uh, flow chart, I guess, a little bit. So when you're, when you're given um, a compound or the formula for a compound, let's say we have this generic compound AB, the first question we have to ask ourselves who is involved? So if we have a metal plus a non-metal, as soon as we see that situation, we know we're going to go to our ionic steps. And if we see that we have two non-metals, so if it's a non-metal plus a non-metal, then we need to know that we're going molecular. If it's ionic, we have to identify if we see that it's binary. And binary means there's just two parts. And in this case, it looks like it's binary. Well, this generic, whatever it is. A, B is an example of something being binary. If it was A, B, O, that would be tertiary, there'd be three parts, so then we'd know to go to our polyatomic area. Again, if we notice that they're both nonmetals, if we're given the formula, say something like C2F2, then we have to use prefixes to name it. So obviously this would be dicarbon di fluoride. Remember that the second uh, element in the name always ends in IDE. If we're given the names, say something like bromine pentacarbide, then we're just deducing from the prefixes. No prefix here means one. Penta means five. So our formula is Br, and carbide is carbon, C5. So those are the two different scenarios that you'd have with, oopsies, with, a, with molecular compounds. Back over to ionic, a, couple of, a quick example. If, for instance, it was, we were given the formula sodium, we said we have two elements, sodium and chlorine have formed a compound. What is its name? Pretty straightforward. Uh, the sodium is the metal. It's already been given first. So that's the first part of the name, sodium. And the second part is the non-metal. That's chlorine. And again, we make the ending, the, the anion. The anion, remember the negative ion, ends in IDE, chloride. Okay. If, for instance, we said, what is the name for... Um, Say sodium, what's the formula for sodium? Um, and I'm just making something up here off the top of my head. Sodium phosphate, and what's its formula? So we know that sodium is Na. We look at our periodic table. And we look that, see that sodium is in family number one, so it's a plus one, it has lost one electron. You look up phosphate. So you look right to your pink sheet. So this is what I'm looking to off camera. I'm looking literally at the pink sheet here. And I'm going to look up phosphate. Phosphate PO is P, phosphate is PO4. It's PO4. And it's kind of hard to see, but it is a three minus. So remember that all compounds must end up neutral. So if I have three, a negative three charge here and I have a positive one charge there, I need three more sodiums. So I'm going to have Na3 and three times plus one is three plus is three is a total of three positive charges. PO4 is already negative three, so three minus three equals zero. So it's Na3, PO4, sodium phosphate. Okay. I think I'll stop this one here, upload that, and then I'm going to do a couple of another video and upload a couple of examples.